Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we go through how to fly the Go Go Birds Ornithopter, a radio controlled flying bird. Let's get to it. An ornithopter is simply an aircraft that flies by flapping its wings. Many of the early aircraft designers tried to emulate birds. They thought that might be a good approach. It is very hard to build flapping wings that can carry any sort of weight like an engine or a man. However, through experimentation, you can get toys to fly pretty well as an ornithopter. And that's what the folks at GoGo -Go Birds have done. They have created really a quite successful flying radio controlled ornithopter. Um, it's a good little, um, airplane and we'll go over some specifics of it so that you can have success if you get one of these. The website for GoGo -Go Birds is in the description. Uh, if you have access to Amazon, that's probably the best place to purchase your GoGo -Go Birds. Keep in mind the GoGo -Go Birds have evolved a lot over time with technology. Some early versions you can see on the internet have two wings. They're like biplane ornithopters with streamers on the wings. Others are quite large with servos. This is a lightweight wand with plastic. Um, and we'll go over details on it in a minute. This is the box that the GoGo -Go Bird comes in. I'll spare you the unboxing. I've already done that. But what I would like to point out is this review will be the, uh, and by the way, this kit was provided to me by the folks at GoGo -Go Bird for review. It'll be the GoGo -Go Bird 201 called the Bennu. So this is the version that we're talking about. You might see other versions if you go on Amazon, depending what's going on. They call it a bionic flying toy, ages eight and up. I'd say that's probably okay to get the thing working. All the connections are pretty small to make it a lightweight. I think you're gonna need <clears throat> somebody a little bit older, a teenager to get it set up the first time, an adult obviously. I don't think an eight year old could take this out of the box and get it to fly, just a, a, a viewpoint from me. And it lists all the things it can do. And here is what is contained in the box. So what is contained in the box is obviously the GoGo -Go Bird itself is completely built. You just have to plug in one of the wings. It's fold over to fit into the box, <clears throat> but that is absolutely easy to do. It's very lightweight. We'll power it up in a second. You've got a protective hood because it'll land head first a lot when it quits flapping. It just quits flying. The versions you may see on the internet had an open basket frame on the fuselage to save weight. This is fully enclosed. A pretty detailed geared mechanism to see the wings flapping. When the wings flap, you can actually feel a little bit of thrust on your face. The wings flap. This is the rudder that goes back and forth to turn the airplane in the air. And we have a um, magnetic actuator, which is a very common thing on lightweight radio control model aircraft. It doesn't have much strength, but the rudder can go full left or right. And again, I'll demonstrate that. There's no movement on the tail surfaces, but on the directions, you can lift it up to uh, 20 degrees or down to 10 degrees. You can just barely see that. That's for um, slower flight or high speed flight. There is a little battery compartment right here, and I'll show you how to connect up the NICAD battery. Um, and that's pretty much the model itself. The on off switch is down here and some lights inside. In addition, you get a NICAD charger. Uh, this plugs into a uh, USB powered uh, charger. There are two of the batteries. When you open the box, you'll find just one battery in the box because the other battery is in the airplane itself with some amount of charge. There is a screwdriver. Uh, the purpose of the screwdriver does one thing. It opens this um, screw right here to remove the screw. To lift this hatch back, the one thing you have to supply are two AAA batteries for the hand controller. And then you get a full um, user guide right here, which is quite comprehensive and it's actually written pretty well. And then a um, quick start guide here that we'll go over in a little bit more detail. I wanna talk just for a moment about the NICAD batteries because it's very important you pay attention to this section to observe the polarity, the red wires and the black wires. If you get those backwards, you will short out the battery to the electronics that'll cook the electronics. It'll, it'll, it'll just fry it through the reverse polarity. So batteries are very important. There are two things you have to observe on the um, polarity. That's plugging the battery into the little charger, 
So let's do that now. There's really no up or down on the charger, but what happens, you can see the red and black wires. There is a way, it won't fit that way, but if you turn it the other way, it goes in like that. Okay, and that's why you need a little bit older person to plug in. This is okay. Now we're gonna plug this in and show you there is a red light when it's charging, a green light when it's fully charged. It's very nice to have that. So let's plug that into the USB right now. And you can see the red light is charging. The green light will stay on. When the red light goes on, it's fully charged. It takes about 20 minutes to charge the battery and then you're good. The manual says about eight minutes of flight and I think that's pretty close. Uh, so you can charge both batteries when you go out to the field. If you want to fly additionally, I have no idea where you get extra batteries. You're just going to have to bring a portable um, battery to charge it at the field. Now, the other thing I want to point out is the polarity. Again, very important when we plug it in. This is the battery hatch. It just is a press fit on here. I had to use a screwdriver to open it up. It was pretty tight fit. But notice we have the red and black wires. We just, we absolutely must match that up to the battery. So the red's at top, we'll put the red at top, and now it's connected, and we put it in like this. So what we have to do, we have to turn on the um, Coco Bird first. So the battery is in place, there's this little micro switch, it's truly a micro switch. We just push that in, and you can see there's a red light for a second, then a green light. The green light means that it's good to go. Now in the user's guide, what will happen is we're going to turn this on, we're going to hit the mode switch, and you can see just barely that little blue light down there by the B. All right? And so B, the blue, stands for what they call the free flight mode. If we push this one time, it turns green, which is the attitude limit. We'll talk about that, green and blue. So green is attitude, B is free flight. Once this is on, it is electronically linked to the GoGo -Go Bird. It's called binding for regular RC flight. If for whatever reason they aren't binded, the directions have what you do to fix that. We're not going to bind it because it should come binded out of the box. So this is ready to go. Now it's on, but I'll show you how to start it flapping. There are two modes that I mentioned. The green is attitude limit. The blue is free mode. The attitude limit, think of A as an autopilot. You can make it fly with a circle, a figure eight, or a circle in the opposite direction with these buttons right here. This button will actually change the color of the light. If you take a look at this, the idea is if you have multiple go, -go birds, you can track yours by the color of the light. I think that's kind of ridiculous, but that's what this button does. It has nothing to do with flight. And when we go to blue, by pushing this once to the um, free flight mode. Free flight is what I think you're gonna be doing 95% of your flying. It means free flight, you control it with this. It's not the autopilot flying in a circle or a figure eight. In the free flight mode, you start the wings flapping by touching this button. And what happens is when you push this um, um, control stick forward, the wings flap faster and it starts climbing up. When we pull it back, it throttles back. Left, right is the rudder, and I'll show you that now. So what I'm going to do is turn it on with the button, make it flap fast, slow, and then we'll show the rudder left, right. That's what we'll do. So let's start the flapping. Now I'm going to make it go faster. I can feel the wind on my face here. Now I'm going to slow it down. And notice the rudder, left, right, left, right, with this control stick right here. If I want to go faster, I push it up and slower pull back. To stop it, I just push the button like that and it stops. Now, as I mentioned in the um, green attitude limit or the autopilot, Theoretically, it has some sensors in here to keep it under about 10 feet altitude. I think the idea is for young children to fly it. You just turn it on with the button. You pick a circle, let it go, and it will attempt to fly a circle one way or the other. And then to stop it, you turn it upside down. 
So in a nutshell, those are the flight modes. I've not had great luck with the autopilot or the altitude limit mode with circles. It does describe a circle, but it's not great. And remember, if the wind blows, it's going to blow the whole model with it. It's not orbiting over a point. Which brings up another point that if you fly, or when you fly this thing, you might have seen some YouTube videos of earlier versions of the GoGo -Go Bird where people fly it in this living room. I don't think there's any way with this version you can fly it in a living room. The biplane version seemed to have much tighter turns, but, but not this one. But it flies pretty good. It can go a long distance pretty quick. Make sure you have a fairly open area. If not, you're going to get caught by surprise. It'll go full throttle, it'll climb up, it'll wind up in the middle of a tree or on the roof of a building. Have adequate space for your first couple of test flights. The other thing I want to point out when you fly, and we'll do this when we go to the flight field when the wind finally calms down, is you'll find a mid-level throttle setting that'll keep it about where it wants to be. If you have full throttle, it's just going to climb almost out of sight. Too low, it can't glide. It has to have flap to flying. You'll find a middle throttle setting. And then what happens to turn, you just bump the throttle. Don't hold uh, the rudder. Don't hold it one way or another. It just seems to work well. You bump it, it'll start a turn and continue from there. So it's an ornithopter. It's not a regular airplane. You're not going to be doing any loops. You'll just have to understand its flight characteristics, but by setting a middle throttle setting and bumping the stick left or right, you should be able to keep it at circles to near where you are. So in a nutshell, I think that's what we need to know for this thing right now. It's an impressive piece of engineering to get these wings to flap to actually produce lift is amazing, extremely lightweight. The range of the radio is about as far as you can see it. And a lot of work went into the design. Let's go out to the um, field and see how it flies. When you're flying any RC model, the two things you're really concerned about, do you have enough thrust and can you turn? You see, just through the gentle hand launch, the GoGo -Go Bird takes right off. It's got plenty of thrust. It climbs really high and it turns. As I mentioned, the key thing with turning is to bump the rudder. Just bump it full left or full right. It really seems to like to turn left a lot better than right. Uh, just the way, that's the way some airplanes are. Notice it climbs pretty quickly. Uh, there was a couple times I was concerned it might wind up on the roof. Just keep it turning towards you so you don't get into a situation where it's in a tree on a roof. This is a fairly big parking um, flying area. There's no wind uh, and the GoGo -Go Bird used just about all its space. Just keep that in mind you take with your first couple test flights. I also noticed during the flights, for whatever reason, the throttle tended to back off after a period of flight. You just have to bump it forward to keep it at full power. And remember, as you add power, it climbs up. So you're climbing, you're turning. Just keep it turning so you're close in to you. But overall, it's a fun uh, experiment in RC flying. It handles pretty well once you understand its characteristics, and it is something different, that's for sure. Thanks for joining me on this video. Uh, RC Ornithopters is something a little bit different, and if you get one, good luck with your flying.